What's up guys, hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out how to hack one of our Zemi Smart smart light switches. So we're going to figure out how to put the Tasmoda, or at least we're going to try to put Tasmoda on. Never have done it before, so if you want to join me for this ride, it's coming up right here, right now on MI Sperry. Okay guys, so as the intro stated, what we're gonna be trying to do is I'm gonna be trying to install Tasmoda on to uh, one of the Zemi Smart switches. Maybe you saw the previous video, I'll put a link somewhere around in here uh, to one of the, the previous video where I talked about the uh, uh, Zemi Smart switch and how to hook it up and connect it. But we found out that you have to have the uh, cloud to do it, it's part of the smart uh, smart home or smart switch or whatever that was. Um, but you have to have the cloud to do that. And I don't like using everything in the cloud. I just don't like doing it, especially not having my secured network attached to the cloud. Don't like doing that. So I'm going to see if there's a way to do it. And I've read that you can use Tasmoda, which those of you that don't know what Tasmoda is. Tasmoda is a really cool uh, firmware for Sonoff style devices, which basically any device that has an ESP like 8266 or an ESP32 or basically one of those uh, style processors in it or microcontrollers, whatever it is. Um, basically, it is a firmware that you can flash to it. Now, I've been reading on the interwebs and supposedly you can flash Tasmoda to these devices. So we're gonna give that a shot. I don't know, may brick it, it may work. Don't know. So any case, um, Tasmoda is one of those uh, firmwares that you can install, which allows us to use MQTT and basically use all kinds of really cool stuff to integrate it in with Home Assistant. So we're going to go ahead and give that a shot. This video might be a little longer because I may fumble, I may bumble. So we'll just have to see how it goes. So I'm gonna put this back over here um, let me get some things situated on my other monitor. Okay, so I'm using this procedure from GitHub, okay, that is a distributing piece. Uh, it's called Tuya Convert, okay? So I'm going to be using all links to all this stuff will be down below. Um, so if you want to give this a shot yourself, um, they give you a huge disclaimer, warning, danger, Will Robinson. They're going to that, uh, you know, if this basically bricks your device, don't blame, blame us. So fine with me. I'm okay with that. It was donated anyway. So we're going to try to do uh, the one that's uh, handling my lights up here, actually. So we'll see how this works. So here's the procedure. We're supposed to uh, clone this in, run some, some prerequisite packages and whatnot, and it basically turns into uh, an updater is basically what it does. And you can actually firmware update the uh, switches over the air, like over, over Wi-Fi firmware updates. So this is basically going to fool that into thinking that it's a firmware update source, and then it will push the Tasmoda firmware. At least that's the theory. So this has been done using Raspberry Pi uh, 3B pluses and whatnot, a Raspberry Pi uh, with a USB dongle or whatever. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try. I've got my 3B plus actually on another project uh, that we're that I'm using it for. So I don't really want to uh, use that for uh, this because, like I said, I've got it on another project. So I'm just going to be using a regular Raspberry Pi B plus. So we'll see if it'll work on the B plus. May may not. So let's go ahead and get to it. So I've got my B plus all set up right here. We're going to go through this procedure. First thing we have to do is we have to get clone HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash CT open source to ya convert. Okay, so we're going to clone that repository. So that may take a little bit. And just like that, it's all over with. All right, so we've got that clone. So now we're going to CD to the to ya convert folder. And we're going to run this, uh, oh yeah, ls-l. We're gonna run uh, this install prerequisite.sh. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run it as root. Doesn't say I have to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay guys, and just like that, it is finished. Now, I did have to do something. Um, it did have a problem first time go, so I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Um, let's see. So what I had to do is enable some other sources. So I had a CD to Etsy, apt. Okay, and then I had vi the source list, sources.list, and then this deb dash source that was commented. So you just have to uncomment that out. Once you do that, then you can run that script again, run the install prerequisites. Okay, and then it should complete properly. So that was that was something there were some missing packages or something like that. So 
Moving on. Now that that's done, we should be able to, I'm going to do sudo just because it's, it's nice to do. So I'm going to do a dot slash start flash dot sh. Okay. So it says to follow the instructions on this. So let's see what we got. Let me read this. Um, let's see here. So please read this carefully. Okay, so I'm going to read this carefully. <laughs> Cannot be held liable for any damage or loss of functionality. Okay. By typing yes plus enter. Yes. Bam. Starting AP in a screen. Stopping any Apache web server. Ooh, is this stopping in a screen? I started my Pi in uh, whatever it is in web server mode. I'm wondering... If that was a bad idea. Oh, nope. Starting web server in a screen. Starting mosquito in a screen. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to let this uh, kind of boogie along. Um, I'm, since I'm using one of the older Pies as well as I'm using an older SD card that's not one of the super fast ones. This may take a while. Just me. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive. Okay, well, here we go. Important, connect any other device, a smartphone or something, to the Wi-Fi VTrust flash. The WPA password is blah. This step is important. Otherwise, the smart config will not work. Smart config. All right. So we're going to take my phone and I'm going to connect to this. So uh, give me just a second and I will connect to it. Okay, guys, real quick, I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing. I had to, put, I forgot totally about it, but the Raspberry Pi B Plus does not have Wi-Fi. <laughs> Derp. I actually switched Raspberry Pis. I switched to a 3B Plus, uh, or not 3B Plus, just a 3, uh, because I, I just had too many. I think those normal Wi-Fi dongles, those little USB ones, they can't be set up as an access point. So um, I know that the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, built-in Wi-Fi can be set up as an access point, and so it's working. So I've got... If I can show you real fast, I've got it set up. Ooh, there it is, that virtual flash or whatever, or VT flash or whatever. So I've got it connected. So now we have to put our IoT device in auto config smart pairing. So we got to have where it blinks fast. It's usually done by pressing hold and primary button and then pressing enter. So I'm going to go run and push that really fast. Okay, so sorry about the darkness. You're going to you're gonna have to deal with my darkness here. So I'm not, oh, get my other keyboard. Now I'm going to press enter. Theoretically, okay, so it says start pairing procedure in screen. File exits, waiting for the upgrade device to appear. If this does not work, have a look at the .log files in the script subfolder. Well, I see that my lights have stopped uh, flashing. Uh, you guys can't see it, but they've stopped flashing. They're on solid, so... Maybe it's working. Okay, guys, so it looks like it found it. So it says IoT device is online with IP, whatever that is, and now it's fetching firmware backup. So it's actually backing up the firmware that's that's on it. The lights are out right now. And so I think I think it's working. So it's backing it up uh, to make sure that we can restore. There should there is an undo function. So it looks like this might be compatible. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go. It says 92. Oh, well, we're 98%. Okay, there we go. So now next steps. To go back to the original software, you have to do that. Be sure the conversion software runs in user 2. What does user 2 mean? This will flash the flash loader in user 2 if it is not already there. It will destroy your ability to undo and go back to the original firmware. Okay. Okay, so we might want to do the device information again. So let's let's get our devices information. Sorry about this. I have to reach down and grab this. So to get the devices information, we curl the HTTP colon slash slash 10.42.42.42. Okay, here we go. Okay, so VTrust Flash. Flash mode, 1M QIO and 40 megahertz. Okay, so we want to write that down. So I'm going to pull up a notepad on my on my normal PC here. Okay, so I've made a note of that. I made a note what flash mode it is. Let's, let's go for broke, guys. Let's just do it. Um, so we're going to curl HTTP colon slash slash 10.42.42.42 flash 3. All right, well, fire away. Device should flash, bin, and restart. So, so, 
So it's not going to... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So it's not going to... Uh, it's not going to give me... Give me like... It's not going to give me like the, the information? What's happening here? What's up here? What did I do? Oh, okay. Um, so wait a minute. It's not going to give me... Device should flash. Can we curl it still? Ooh. I may have bricked it. I totally may have bricked it. So, guys, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see what happens because, uh, yeah. I may have bricked it. Um, I'm going to go back and test it, so give me a second. Okay, well, guys, that, that bricked that, so we're going to have to solder on some stuff. So let's go ahead and take this sucker apart. Ooh, if I can. Ooh, I'm going to need a bigger screwdriver. Okay, so there's some of the inside. Looks like we got even more to take apart. Ooh, now wait a minute. I see something. I don't know if you guys see that. Do you see that? Here, let me zoom in if I can. See that? It says transmit ground. I think that might be the, this might be the brain board. Yeah, this one might be the brain board. So that might be where we want to solder. But I'm going to take this one out of its little shell just to make sure let's take this wire off uh, i think this is probably just going to be relay modules okay so there's our three relays yep it's exactly what i thought it's just a power board okay so this board i can probably just go ahead and put back in it's going to be this one is the one that we're going to want to uh investigate okay guys there we are i recognize you and then there's the wi-fi uh antenna built into the circuit board. So there he is. Looks like this one is, I don't know if my camera will focus. I may have to look at it. Give me a second. Looks like it is indeed an ESP 8266EX is what it is. So it's definitely ESP 8266. So that probably being said, that means that these right here, this transmit V33 and ground, that's, there we are. That's the ones that we need to solder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put a little header in there. Um, hopefully it'll fit. I'll probably check measurements uh, to see if it'll fit with a header on, or, you well, know, nah, I think I'm just going to solder some, some wires onto it and then we can just take them right off. All right, so let me get some soldering, and we'll be back. Okay, guys, so I got it all soldered in. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so I got some stuff soldered on. I'm going to use these uh, little double-sided uh, pushy clippy things, uh, zoop, 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 to uh, clip onto it, and then we're going to hook it to our, uh, basically, uh, RS-232 to serial device. Okay, guys, so I got all that soldered up and everything, and it's all plugged in to my computer. So now what I'm going to do is I have downloaded the normal, went to Tasmoda, and I don't downloaded the normal just sawnoff, uh, dot bin. So inside here, ah, here we go, provided by our new downloads. So sawnoff.bin, sawnoff version without WPS and smart config configuration, but adds more sensors, recommended release uh, binary. So it wants you to, I'm going to try that one. We'll see what it does. Uh, hopefully it'll work right. But, uh, you know, here's looking at it. Now, to flash it, we're going to need to download this Node MCU uh, Pi Flasher. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. We should be able to click latest release here. Uh, ESP2 Node Flasher uh, X64 for Windows 10. And we should be able to download that and install it. So it looks like... Okay, so I downloaded it and pulled it up here. So it looks like we're going to uh, look for a serial port, which I'm going to have to figure out what my serial port is that this is connected to. So give me a moment. I'm going to look in my device manager here real fast. Under ports, uh, looks like it's COM3 is that USB to serial guy. So COM3. So we're going to choose COM3 up here. Going to choose where our package is, which is somewhere around in here, sonoff.bin. Now, here's where us taking note of that will come in handy. So, flash mode is 1 meg, 40 megahertz. I'm going to leave it to 115200. QIO. So, it's the QIO. Erase flash. Uh, sure, why not? Um, and then, I'll just keep it 115200. We'll see how that goes. So, let's go ahead and flash it and see if anything happens. So, I don't know what dashes mean. 
I don't know if dashes are good. Seems kind of random to me. Now, I could have had, I hooked up receive to receive and transmit to transmit. That could be wrong. I may need to flip them. So we'll just see how this goes. I'll check back with you when it's done. Okay, guys, so this was kind of a mess to get uh, put together, though. I have it on here. What it was was um, you have to wire it up in a special way. You know how we normally have to ground down GPIO 0 to get uh, it to go into boot loader mode? So it'll go into uh, the, 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 the Sonoff device will go into a mode where it will accept new firmware. What you have to do is you have to attach another wire to the IO pin zero, which is on the back of the board. And I'll show you a uh, picture right now of what that looks like. Okay, so that's how I had everything connected up. So all you do is you short that pin IO0 to ground uh, when you plug in your uh, USB to serial device and it basically puts it into bootloader mode. Then you run that node NCU uh, Pi flash or whatever. You run that and then it loads right in. So no big deal at all. Now it does load up where it's your normal Tasmoda mode where you know you you find you find uh, the, the Sonoff device on your phone. Uh, there's instructions, got links in the description. I don't think I'm gonna go through that here but you dial into it put in your ssid and whatnot and then it links up to your network what i do want to show you though is the last few bits of information you need to do i want to show you the configuration so we hit configuration once you get it going hit configure module and this is the configuration if you want to screenshot this this is the configuration you want to choose generic at the beginning and then i went ahead and i did all the button mapping for you so if you're using this exact device um, here's the button mapping. You can save that configuration. Now, the last thing that we want to do is on this thing, there's a problem with one of the pins, which is normally the normal Tasmoda reset pin, which causes you to, let's say, if it just goes and gets lost, you can hold a pin down for 40 seconds and it just completely factory resets the device, basically. Uh, factory resets uh, Tasmoda. Problem is that pin is being utilized in this uh, smart switch that I have, this specific one. It's being utilized and it's always held in that mode. So your device will load up, but then after just a little bit, it'll reset and factory reset itself. And then sometimes it'll go off and get lost and you can't use it anymore. So to disable that feature, the minute you uh, get this flashed on here, um, basically on your main menu, there is a console mode. In here, I'm not going to enter it because I've already uh, I've already done it, but uh, I'll show you what I'll do. You're going to type in set option, oops, set option one space one, which turns option one on. So you'd hit enter at that point. Then the next command you run is set option 13 one and then hit enter. Once that's done, you'll see some stuff scroll in here telling you what's happening. Once that's done, um, make sure you come back uh, to your uh, configuration and make sure and back up your configuration. This is actually really easy to do. You click this and you just save your config wherever. So that way, if for some reason you need to restore uh, the software, or you need to delete it and reinstall it, you can just come in here and say restore configuration and it'll just figure it out for you, which is really, really awesome. So any case, that is basically in a nutshell how to get your smart switch flashed with uh, the Tasmoda software. So if you guys like this video, make sure and throw a like. Uh, definitely uh, hit subscribe and ring the bell. Make sure you choose all notifications in there uh, so that way uh, you don't miss any of the new content. Got more stuff coming. Um, I'm gonna be traveling again. Uh, that's what's been you know just killing me here, uh, being making video stuff. So I've been traveling so much for my work. It's just been crazy. Hopefully though, by next summer, it should all die down. All the travel should die down and everything should go kind of back to normal. So I probably get back to my normal regularly regular scheduled uh, deployments of, of videos. So bear with me. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing and all that jazz. Check me out on Twitter and all the other Instructables and all the other places. Check me out. Uh, check out the different merch that's down below as well. And I will see you next time.